There is a place called heaven, whether you see it or not, that doesn't change the existence of God's ultimate plan for our life. What is that plan? In Jeremiah, he says that there is a plan. God has a plan. Sometimes we're like, uh, can I suggest a plan B? <laughs> That's what I was doing. Because heaven didn't seem real to me at times because I didn't see it. Some people think I only have one foot just because they see only one foot. But I have a little second one right here. <laughs> and it's always there. God's presence is always there. If you call upon the name of the Lord, you shall be saved and healed and redeemed. I don't know if God's going to give me arms, legs in this lifetime, but I'll tell you just one quick story of why I have joy in my life. Thank God for my parents, first of all, and my family for loving me through that. But eight years ago, I was here in this area speaking at a church, and a little boy with no arms, no legs was in the crowd. The father held him up, 19-month-old little Daniel Martinez, no arms, no legs, little foot just like me. And I'm like, wow, that's so cool. We're going to wrestle later on. <laughs> I got the father to bring him up on stage, and everyone was looking at him, and people were crying. I looked at him, he's looking up at me with his big brown eyes and a big smile. And when I looked at him, I remembered when I was at school, when I was getting teased, when I was getting bullied, when I felt alone, when I was broken, when I was depressed, to the point of an attempted suicide at age 10. I tried to drown myself in our fam family bathtub because I felt alone, I felt worthless, and I felt life was pointless. If there is no point to my suffering, then if God's not gonna relieve my suffering, and I'll do it myself. But by the grace of God, I did not go through with that because of the love of my parents. But I thought one way of really seeing a miracle would be if God would send a limbless man to my school and talk to all these kids about bullying. That would have changed my life. That would be classed in my eyes as a miracle. But when you don't get a miracle, you can still be a miracle of God for someone else. It's that 15 foot radius around you, the people you come into contact with. People notice my smile. People notice when I look them in their eyes, they're like, what's a guy without arms and legs smiling about? Well, I, I love God and he has set me free. The only cure to death is resurrection and because I believe I'm living forever and ever and ever, not that just heaven is real, but Jesus is real to me now. He carries me when I cannot walk. And if God can use a man without arms and legs to be his hands and feet, then God can use you too. If God used my broken pieces, then God can use your broken pieces. If God caused a lame woman to walk in India in front of me, he can cause you to walk if you cannot walk. But let me tell you about the love of God for a second. This old woman in India, she looked about 144 years old. I mean, she was, she couldn't close her mouth because she was that weak. She looked at me, she was trembling like this. And through a translator, we spoke to her. Where were we in India? In the red light district of brothel houses, 150 brothel houses where 10 year olds are kidnapped and sold by their parents sometimes for $700. Forced into sex slavery. That's where we were going to preach the gospel and we went into a home and this old woman was sitting down on the floor. Her sister walks in and says, stop talking about your God, stop talking about Jesus. Show me that he's real, make this woman walk. She said, I don't wanna hear about your God, let me see it. So I sort of took a step, step back and I'm like, okay God, you know that she's putting you on the spot here, not me, right? You know that. <laughs> You're not putting me on the spot. She's putting you on the spot. I just want you to get that here. <laughs> so we prayed about it, uh, uh, prayed for her, prayed um, just right there and then with even a camera rolling. And the first time she tried to get up, she couldn't get up. She was trying to stretch her legs out. She hadn't walked for four years. She's never left that front door for four years. 
they carry her to the restroom. She, her sister was saying that she was dying. Now, we prayed again. She got up all by herself. She started jumping up and down. It was a miracle. But here's the miracle, who that woman was. That woman wasn't just any woman. That woman was the one who started that whole red light district 45 years ago of organizing sex slavery, getting the pimps and the madams and the kidnappers and ruining and destroying thousands and thousands of girls' lives. And God healed her. God pursued her. God pursues you every day, every breath. For as long as you are breathing, the door of mercy and grace is open to you. Adam and Eve, who had no belly button, by the way, were with God in the Garden of Eden. God wanted us as a family. For as long as Adam and Eve did not sin, that one sin, they would be with God forever. The fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. As soon as they sinned, God couldn't be in their presence because he is God. He is holy. God is the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. He created the universe. He created everything we see and we don't see. Who am I to say, hey God, you, you owe me an explanation for this. He's God. Who am I? Who am I that I could demand, hey God, please tell me what you're going to do with me and then I'll trust you? It's as foolish as me having a broken house and the best carpenter knocks on my door and I don't let him in because I want him to explain what he's about to do to fix me up. Jesus is the healer. He loves you. Don't deny him into your heart just because you don't believe that you're not good enough for his love. That's the amazing thing about God's unconditional love. He pursues you. And when you hear his voice, don't harden your heart. Let him in. I hardened my heart. I didn't think he could do miracles with my broken pieces. But man, you know, when I was a kid, I, I never thought I'd get married. I have a beautiful wife. Her name is Kanae. We have a little baby boy, nearly 18 months old. His name is Kiyoshi. He's already my height. <laughs> he, 